In this video, we're going to cover the six basic trigonometric functions. This is extremely important as you get deeper into trigonometry, as they form a nice foundation for a lot of the other stuff you'll be doing. So let's go ahead and begin and look at these six basic trigonometric functions. At their core, what these trigonometric functions do is they compare sides in a right triangle, usually in relation to some sort of given angle. So here I have sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And you can see in parentheses here, there's marked out an angle, uh, and if you haven't seen this letter before, it is known as theta. Now you could call this angle anything you want, um, but usually we stick with the Greek letters. So you'll see lots of alphas, betas, thetas, uh, maybe occasionally an x, but this guy right next to your trig function represents the given angle. You can see after that equal sign, I have all of these abbreviations for the sides that are being compared. So for sine, I have the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. The rest of the trigonometric functions are very similar, but they're essentially related to the first three by taking the reciprocal. So hypotenuse over opposite, hypotenuse over adjacent, and adjacent over opposite. I recommend that you probably want to have these first three memorized in case you ever have to use them later on. And a good mnemonic for memorizing these first trigonometric functions is this. Sum old horse caught a horse taking oats away. Sum old horse caught a horse taking oats away. If you can remember that, then you basically have the first trigonometric functions down and then you can find the rest by taking the reciprocals. This has a, another nice ring to it. This is known as Sakatoa. Now to understand how it relates sides of a right triangle and why you need a given angle, let's look at some right triangles and see why this is. So here I have two right triangles. I've marked out an angle on this one, theta. I've marked out an angle on this one, beta. So there's many different ways that you could end up dividing the sides. I could take blue divided by red, or green divided by red, or even say red divided by blue. To make sure that I, I keep all of these straights, that's where we pick up these terms opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. In both of these diagrams, the red side is the long side, and we call this the hypotenuse of the triangle. The hypotenuse is always the longest side. Now, in this first triangle, since I've marked out theta, the side right next to it is the adjacent side. You can see that it really does matter what angle I talk about, because in the second triangle where I've marked out beta, the side next to it is this one. So this is the adjacent side. It looks like we have one more side in there, that's the opposite side. So you find the angle, you go directly to the opposite side of the triangle, and there it is. There's our angle, directly the opposite side. Done. So when we look at the value for our trigonometric functions, we'll look at what angle is given so we can identify adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse. All right, let's look at an example and find some trigonometric functions. So here I have a right triangle with sides of 9, 12, and 15, and you can see there's an angle of, of theta and another angle of beta. Let's see if I can figure out the sine of theta. So I need to recognize what is my opposite side and what is the hypotenuse. Well, since I'm talking about theta, the opposite side would be the 9, and the hypotenuse is 15. So 9 divided by 15. You'll see that you get sometimes a lot of fractions with these trigonometric functions, uh, and you do want to make sure that you simplify them if you can. So the top and bottom are divisible by 3, so this is 3 over 5. All right, not too bad. Let's do another one. Here's cosine of theta. What two sides do I need to compare? Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. 
So adjacent, that's the side right next to my theta, 12. And my hypotenuse is still 15. Well, it looks like this one can be reduced as well. 4 fifths. All right, let's do one more. Let's see, tangent of theta would be opposite over adjacent. And again, that's in relation to theta. So opposite over adjacent. 9 over 12. And this one reduces to 3 fourths. Now, most of the time, we're usually looking for this angle here. But let's look at uh, another bunch of examples that switch back and forth between the angles and get a little bit more difficult. We'll also try and use some more of those trigonometric functions just for some extra practice. All right, so here's a different right triangle. I've marked out theta, beta, and it has sides of 8, 15, and 17. We're going to try and find all of these trigonometric functions. If you have to refer back to how each of these trigonometric functions relate to the sides, please do, as it will be most helpful uh, in seeing where I get these values. Let's start. So this one wants the sine of beta. I know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm looking at my beta. Opposite would be the 15. Hypotenuse is 17. So 15 seventeenths. Done. All right, a new trig function, cosecant. Cosecant of theta. Well, cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite. So 17, that's my hypotenuse. Opposite is 8. Done. Secant. Secant of beta. Well, secant uh, is equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And I'm talking about beta here, so here's the hypotenuse, there's the adjacent. 17 eighths. Cotangent of beta. So thinking of beta, that's adjacent over opposite. Tangent of theta. So thinking about this angle, opposite over adjacent. It looks like two more to go. Okay, so cosine of beta. Uh, let's see, adjacent over hypotenuse. And cotangent of theta. So here's my theta, adjacent over opposite. Uh, that was quite a marathon, wasn't it? You can see that it really does matter which angle you have so you know which sides are opposite and adjacent. Uh, also, you may notice that uh, some of these trigonometric functions turned out to be the same value. Uh, later on in some of my other videos, you'll see that there's lots of connections in trigonometry, and it's okay if you notice that two things are equal. There may be another formula lurking in the background. So hopefully you understand more about these trigonometric functions, and now can use them when you have the sides of a right triangle.